Well, it's been quite a week of offending people for me. I don't know if that's a normal occasion for you. I've had plenty of times that I've given offense in my life as a Christian, but um, sometimes it was for bad reasons. But I believe these days that I'm simply offending people because I'm becoming more bold. Some people oppose deliverance ministry because they think it's an easy way out, that you're blaming your sins on a demon. But people who say such things don't understand deliverance ministry. They don't know what it actually entails. Deliverance or discipline is actually a key component of deliverance. And one of the things that has caused me to offend people recently is because of the issue of discipline. If you are not disciplined, you cannot maintain your deliverance because demons take advantage of all openings and all weaknesses. That's why the Bible says to put on the full armor of God so that you may stand in the day of trial. And so without discipline, you're not going to be able to maintain your freedom. Discipline is a key part of getting free. You stir up demons. You cause them to lose power when you spend time in the Word, when you spend time worshiping, when you spend time in prayer, when you spend time in Christian fellowship, when you starve them, when you turn off the television, when you stop serving the internet. When you begin to do the things that put pressure on demons, they get very uncomfortable. This is a very key part of deliverance. Many people get offended by deliverance or or by discipline. And if you are getting offended, if you are in a state of offense, you are not ready for deliverance. And so I want to talk today about the spirit of offense, because there are many people that are easily offended, many Christians that are easily offended. I want to say to you that if you are easily offended, the devil does have a foothold in your life. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't allow the devil to get a foothold and so uh, gain an advantage over you. Don't let any root of bitterness spring up. And when we allow things to Um, fester in our hearts that are not dealt with, it can cause bitterness to spring up. Uh, It can make us have a spirit of offense because we are insecure about ourselves. There is no good reason for a Christian to walk in offense because we have grace. We have grace available to us. There's no reason for us to be offended if somebody accuses us of something. Believe me, I've been accused a lot this past week, and it doesn't feel good. I don't like it. And at times, it has caused great consternation in me. It's caused shame. Uh, It's caused uh, wrestling, difficulty, self-doubt. But I come out of it through the grace of God. I come out of it through worship, because no matter what man says about me, no matter what demons say about me, I know that I'm loved, I'm forgiven, I'm accepted. So if somebody criticizes me and they're right, all I have to do is say, you're right, I'm sorry. And if they're wrong, all I have to do is say, thank you, Jesus, for loving me in spite of what men say about me. Deliverance is for the desperate. It's not for those who are easily offended. You cannot get free if you're easily offended. If you distrust a deliverance minister, then you need to find somebody else. But if you're simply offended by the deliverance minister, then you have a problem and you actually are being defeated in that moment by a spirit of offense, which is part of the network of demons that are being used, that that are in your life controlling and dominating you. You need to be set free from that. In Matthew 15, 26, we're told about a Gentile woman, a Syrophoenician, who asked Jesus for deliverance for her daughter. Uh, The Bible says that she was calling out to Jesus, and Jesus was not answering her. And the disciples actually said, Jesus, can you just tell her to go away because she keeps following us? So, uh, it was so annoying, it was so pestering uh, that the disciples asked Jesus to do something to stop it. So, Jesus is already ignoring the woman. That is a reason for many people to be offended. Many people come to the church uh, and looking for help, and yet they get so easily offended, they say, you judged me, you did this or whatever, and they go, they go running off. This woman is being ignored by the head pastor. Je- this woman is being ignored by the central figure, Jesus, who uh, is proclaiming a gospel. She's come to hear that gospel. She's come to receive from that gospel, but Jesus is ignoring her, and yet she doesn't go away. She's not easily offended. She persists, so much so that the disciples ask Jesus, can you send her away? Because this is getting annoying. And this is Jesus' response. This is such an inflammatory response. Jesus says, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Okay, so 
in our culture, it would be bad enough to call somebody a dog. But in our culture, we actually worship go- uh, dogs in many ways. You know, some people have God as my uh, co-pilot. Some people have dog as my co-pilot. You know, people um, worship dogs. They have bumper stickers. I'm a dog mom. You know, that like it's insane the the amount the amount of affection that is wasted on dogs. I'm not a dog person. I understand you can have a, a sincere, genuine, a healthy affection for your dog, but we we literally have replaced human beings with dogs in this country and it's kind of gross and pathetic. But whatever the case, they're honored in our culture and if but if you called someone a dog in our culture, They would still be highly offensive. But in this case, dogs were not domesticated uh, at this time in this culture, in Jesus' culture. They They were on the same level as pigs. They were scavengers. They ate dead things. They ate among the garbage. They rooted among the garbage. They were nasty. And in the Jewish uh culture with the Torah, they would be considered unclean. So Jesus was saying, should I take the children's bread and throw it to this unclean animal who's begging for some food. The woman still does not go away. She is not offended. She is not angry. Rather, she embraces the title. And I want to say, before I go on here, I want to say that I believe Jesus was deliberately drawing this out. He was um, treating this woman cruelly for the sake of the disciples because he was displaying their own prejudice, their own attitude toward the Gentile people that uh, he was rubbing it in their face. Sometimes we don't really know how ugly we sound until we hear ourselves. Sometimes, uh, I I remember one time when I was angry, I happened to walk by a window. I was in the middle of an argument. I I walked by a window or a mirror. I saw my reflection, and I saw my own face, and I saw how frightening and repulsive it was. And uh, that actually made me change. It made me realize I had a problem. I needed to deal with it because uh, because I finally saw myself. And I believe what Jesus was doing here is showing the disciples their own uh, prejudice. He's putting it in their face so that they step back and say, whoa, uh, are you sure you're not taking that a little too far, Jesus? And realizing that it's them that had a heart change needed. So, But Jesus still took a great risk in calling this woman a dog, and yet the woman was not turned away. She was not easily offended. She was more desperate than she was uh, willing to be offended. And she says to him, yes, master. She, She takes a designation of being a dog, and she simply says, but even the dogs under the table lick up the scraps that fall from the children's table. This woman's humility won the day. And Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. Your daughter has been healed. The woman got what she was seeking for because she didn't care about her dignity. She didn't care about her status. She didn't care about what people thought of her. The disciples were telling her to go away. Jesus seemed to be ignoring her. She would not be turned away because she knew that Jesus had the words of life and she would not be deterred. This is who gets freedom. I have met with many people, many, many people over the last three years or so, and uh, some people have had remarkable freedom. Many people, most people have uh, temporary freedom, Um, definitely an immediate impact, but some people walk it out and some people don't. And the difference is discipline and devotion and desperation. If you want Jesus, you will get Jesus. Jesus said, all who seek me will find find me if you search for me with your whole heart. And Jesus said, it is for freedom. The Bible says it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, to set the captives free, and to bind up the brokenhearted. This is what he does. But we don't just come to get what he does. We don't just come to get his stuff. We come to get him. We get Jesus and freedom comes with it. We get Jesus because Jesus is the truth. Those who walk in freedom are those who hunger and, tr- and thirst for truth, for righteousness. They don't just hunger for relief. They hunger for truth. And if you want to walk in the truth, you will be set free. The spirit of offense comes when someone doesn't want to walk in the whole truth because the whole truth includes our own sinfulness. Our whole truth includes the places where we need to change, the places where we have problems. And a lot of people don't want to admit to their problems because they don't yet believe in grace. And this is the irony of it. 
Some people are afraid to talk about sin, and they say it's all about grace, but they actually don't believe in grace. The only people who actually believe in grace are those who are willing to talk about their sin. Because if we don't believe in grace, we simply hide from our sin. We can't face it. We're too scared to. We have no power to. We're afraid that if we're exposed, all of our value will be completely demolished. But if we believe in grace, then we're not afraid to come into the light. This is the judgment that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. But if you are desperate, you are willing to come into the light and let your deeds be exposed. And these are the people that are set free. The woman said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Nothing would turn this woman away because she was desperate. And Jesus praised her faith. He said, Woman, your faith is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And your daughter, her daughter was healed at once. You know, when we are desperate for Jesus, when we pursue him with a whole heart, with abandon, it not only brings deliverance for us, it brings deliverance for our children. It is time to throw away our pride. We have nothing to be proud of. It's time for us to just give up being offended. We have no reason to be offended. If we are guilty of something, he will forgive us, bring it into the light. And if we're not and we're being falsely accused, he knows the truth and he will vindicate us. We, can be, we are safe in his arms. The, the accusations of the devil and the accusations of men will not stick to us. That's why the Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue accusing us in judgment will be condemned because we stand in Jesus. We don't have to defend ourselves because Jesus is our advocate. He is our defense attorney and he will protect us. So if you're innocent, trust in Jesus. If you're guilty, trust in Jesus. And when you are doing that, when you're trusting in Jesus, there will be no more room for offense. Deliverance is for the desperate. The spirit of offense will keep you in prison. Where the spirit of of offense exists, there is lots of arguing. There's lots of strife. There's there's lots of outbursts of anger because demons never travel alone. They open doors for other demons and they magnify their and multiply their ungodly fruit. So somebody here today watching, somebody listening, you've been walking an offense. People have said things, you're ticked off of them, you don't talk to them anymore. You left that church because somebody said something or did something you didn't like, and you're still angry. You don't really worship anymore because you don't really have joy because you don't walk in the freedom of grace and peace. And today, the Lord is calling you to repentance. The Lord has not called you to be a perfect person. He has not called you to be, uh, to, to be able to say, he, he takes no value in you being able to say, I have never made a mistake in my life. One, because it's not true. And two, because it's not a competition. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. He wants us to be free, to be at rest. He wants us to be at rest in him. This isn't a competition with other human beings. Holiness is not about being better than other people. It's about being free. And a truly holy person is full of grace and full of love for other people. It is not a competition. And that is uh, one of the chief things that we, uh, chief ways we can recognize the spirit of offense because it is in competition with others because it feels inferior. It makes you feel inferior. So if that's you, I want to invite you right now to repent of being offended. I want you to forgive whoever you feel hurt hurt you. Tell, tell the Lord why you feel offended. Say, Lord, I feel like they judged me. Um, and I think, I think it's important when I lead people through these prayers, oftentimes people say things just as I just did. I feel like they did this. It's important to say whether or not they did. Like, this person hurt me. Now, I feel like they hurt me, but they did hurt me. And it's in confessing it a lot of times we find out the truth. Did that person really wrong you, or did you simply interpret it that way? And this is why it's important just to get into God's presence and speak honestly and frankly. This is the discipline of deliverance that a lot of people struggle with, and it is not at all um, the easy way out. If you're dealing with a demon, though, it is the only way out. That's the thing about those who stand against deliverance ministry. One, they don't understand it. It's not 
a cheat scam. It's not a way to, to uh, a, a shortcut to holiness. It's actually the hard work of holiness. And a lot of people are afraid of doing it. But it is worth it. It is only for the desperate. So, Lord, today, uh, we just repent of anger that we have towards our parents. We, have, we repent of anger that we have towards our spouses, towards our ex-spouses, towards our children. Lord, forgive us for wasting our breath, wasting our time, wasting our energy, being angry at them because of something they said. Thank you that you are enough for us. Lord, we repent of our anger. We repent of our bitterness. We repent of our rage. Forgive us now, Lord, and remove from us the spirit of offense in Jesus' name. Lord, I renounce the spirit of offense. I do not want to walk in an offense. I want to walk in grace and truth. I don't need the spirit of offense. He's not protecting me. He's not helping me. I renounce him right now in Jesus' name. So in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of offense to leave my life. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of offense to leave your life. I declare that he who the Son sets free is free indeed, and I will not walk in offense anymore. Spirit of offense, come all the way up and all the way out right now. All roots of bitterness, I command you out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Unforgiveness, go. Anger, go. Rage, go. Spirit of abuse and trauma, go right now in Jesus' name. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that I don't need to defend myself because you are my advocate. Thank you for defending me through your blood. And thank you, Lord, that even though I was a sinner, while I was still a sinner, you died for me. So thank you, Lord, that I don't have to affirm my value anymore. You've already declared it once and for all. I was worth your sacrifice on the cross, and you are glad you made me, and I thank you for that. If this has helped you in some way, leave a fire emoji, leave a comment, like it, subscribe, share it with a friend. May the Lord set us free in deeper and deeper ways to set this generation free from all the satanic bonds placed upon it. In Jesus' name, 